Hey everyone, welcome to the first video of the channel. In this video, I'll be recreating this photograph by Kim Holterman. Link to his photograph series will be in the description. Do check it out. It's an amazing set of uh, cinematic photographs and I felt really inspired by it and I wanted to recreate one of those photos in Blender. So that's what we're doing today. Before starting though, I just wanted to make it clear that this is not a tutorial. Because you probably know more about Blender than me. I'm pretty sure of that. I'm at that weird intermediate level where one day I'll make something and it will look absolutely stunning. And the next day I'll be making plans to quit the whole thing. So it's better that I leave the tutorials to the experts. So this is not a tutorial. This will just be a simple rundown of how this whole recreation process went. I actually really enjoy those kind of videos. Like the one Andrew made a few months back and also the one Clint made a few weeks back. I really love watching the creative process of different artists and how they approach different scenes. So I love watching those kind of videos and I wanted to make something similar to that. That and also render challenges that people do on YouTube. Like Corridor Crew does every few weeks. Or like Steve did for that Bob Ross painting. Uh, so this is both like a breakdown and kind of a challenge to me. So yeah, that's what we're doing. Enough chatter for now. Let me show you how it went. So first, I started by laying down the basic shape of the outer booth, which was not that hard. Just basic extruding, insetting and beveling, nothing special. Then the same process for the phone booth itself, adding some basic details and just getting the overall shape right. But I'll be honest, I did not put any effort into this at all. I was just putting stuff in random places, not paying any attention to detail. Just winging it as I go. Because I knew it won't be visible from that camera angle and the distance that I had in mind and all those dark moody lights that I had planned for the scene. Not because I'm lazy or something. No. Not at all. It was all the other reasons that I mentioned. The angle and the lighting and the distance. Uh, yeah. So I did try putting some effort into the phone itself. But I couldn't for the life of me figure out how to model that. It just looked horrible. It looked so bad. I've never seen a phone receiver look so bad. But I just kept it there for placement and thought of fixing it later. Spoiler, I never did. Then came what I think was the most interesting thing in the photo. That triangular shed kind of thing. The material on it was really interesting. So I tried giving my model kind of like a transparent, translucent kind of material with a little subsurface scattering. But it did not look good at all. It was looking horrible. So again, I left it as is for now and thought of fixing it later. Then I worked a little on the upper light panels, which was nothing but a cube with a translucent material and an emission plane inside it. And I placed some area lights around it as well. And that part actually turned out good, in my opinion. Also, I was constantly rendering the scene again and again, just to see how the scene was coming together. And at that point, it was not looking great at all. I was pretty disappointed by it. I was at the verge of restarting the whole thing from scratch, even quit at some point and thought of going with a different photograph. Like most intermediate artists do, I think. They give up when the scene starts getting a little difficult, but I tried sticking with it for a change. See how it turns out. So next day, I started looking for some textures and I went to ambientcg.com or previously known as CC Zero Textures. It is bizarre to me that in this world and age, a tool like Blender is first of all free. And over that, there are other thousands and thousands of resources that are freely available as well. It's crazy. What a world we live in, right? So yeah. Applied some textures here and there, and the scene was looking okay at that point. I then spent some time creating a sticker for the phone booth, and that too, like everything else, was looking awful. But I kept working on it, adding as much detail as my impatient mind could handle. I went to the ground, I added an asphalt material for it, gave it some puddles, made some road barriers, changed some lighting here and there, and the scene was still looking ugly as hell. So this is when I thought of fixing that triangular shed thing because I felt like that was the major focal point in the scene and that itself was not looking good at all. So while messing around with a few sliders here and there, I changed the transmission slider and the alpha slider on the principal BSDF uh, node and it just randomly gave me this nice glass frosted kind of look to the whole thing and I think it was looking good at that point. And I know I'm deviating from the original photo there but I think the frosted glass looked really good so I stayed with it. The next one are I just added scratches to everything literally everything the glass the metal even the ugly phone receiver I added scratches to everything and the scene was bit by bit looking a little better but it was still far from complete. Then I started working on the base on which the whole phone booth rested on. I tried a bunch of textures on it but at the end just put the same asphalt material as the ground and that looked okay. I distorted its geometry a bit made some noisy icospheres and put some boolean on it and gave it 
a cracky look. Next I made some super simple, super lazy moths to put around the light source, just cause it looks good. And to be honest, they don't even look like moths in the final render, but that's okay, I can live with that. After that, it was just a cycle of rendering again and again, fixing small things here and there. And I am rushing through this part because the video can't be super long, but this took a lot of time. I don't want to appear like I figured everything out with no effort. This took a lot of time. I tried a bunch of different things, adding volumetrics, adding stickers that are all around the booth, adding tiny pebbles and whatnot, like just fidgeting with the scene and see what looks good and what does not. And it was starting to look a bit okay after all that effort. The phone still looked ugly as hell. I again couldn't figure out how to model it, so I just went on Sketchfab, downloaded a phone model and put it there. I couldn't deal with it anymore. After all this was done, I think the scene was looking okay, but it was still missing some story. A phone booth in the dark doesn't really tell a story in my opinion. So what I did was, I went to Sketchfab again and I downloaded a shoe model. I put a toppled shoe in the middle of the scene and I think that was a great addition for the story. Why is the shoe even there? What happened at this phone booth? Did a victim run away from his kidnapper and stumble upon this phone booth? He tries making a call to the police but he sees that the kidnapper is catching up so he tries to run away again. In that process he trips over something, loses the shoe and runs into the darkness. Did he run away and save his life? Did the kidnapper catch him and drag him back into the car? Maybe the police found the shoe and then the kidnapper and then the deceased picked I don't know, it's turning way too dark. I just needed to add some story and the shoe did it for me. I'm gonna leave it at that. And after that it was just render after render, making small adjustments every time, adding any necessary details required, removing unnecessary details, tweaking and turning sliders until it all started to come together. And it did! Finally, after 6-7 hours of effort spread across 3 days, I finished the scene. I rendered the final image, put it in GIMP, GIMP, the poor man's photoshop. So I put it in GIMP. Did a little post processing, which is just a fancy word for sliding the exposure slider and changing some color balance here and there. And voila, I was done. After 8 hours of proper effort, I came up with this scene. And I think the render turned out really good at the end. At least from distance. If you zoom in too close, you'll see all the mistakes that I made and all the crappy design work that I did. But from distance, I think it looks really good. I had a lot of fun making this uh, scene. That's a lie. I had a horrible time figuring out how to fix all the problems that I came across, but I'm glad it turned out good at the end. And I know I steered away a lot from the original image, but that was never my intention to make a carbon copy of the whole photograph. I just wanted to recreate it the best I could in Blender. So let me know what do you think? How well do you think I did? What would you fix in the scene? What would you add in the scene? What did you like? about the scene. Let me know your thoughts. Comment down below. Like the video if you like this idea because I'm going to be doing this series for several other, not just for photographs, but for 2D artwork maybe, or paintings, or even 3D artwork just to figure out how the original artist might have done it. So yeah, this is it. This is the video. This is the final render. Let me know what you think. Subscribe if you'd like to see more of this series. For now, I'm done. I'll see you guys in the next video. Hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.